So in general, when somebody asks me whether or not this calculia is real, what they're really asking me is whether or not it's based in genetics or biology, or whether it's due to um, poor academic skills or poor teaching uh, or other environmental factors. Um, and to answer the, the question briefly, yes, the scalculia is real and it is genetically based, at least for some subset of individuals who are diagnosed with it. Um, there are a couple of specific regions in the brain that researchers have linked with dyscalculia. Um, so if we look at the following um, graph or presentation, um, you can see that there are several colored regions uh, in this brain. And um, this brain looked, uh, compiles information from a number of brains that were involved in a study where they compared neurotypical individuals to individuals with this calculia. And all the colored regions were areas where uh, individuals with this calculia had different activation. This yellow area, also known as the intraparietal sulcus, um, has been shown time and time again to be connected to dyscalculia. And individuals who have dyscalculia, and specifically the, the, the better defined developmental dyscalculia diagnosis, tend to have um, anatomical abnormalities in this area, or less gray matter, fewer brain cells in this area. Uh, and this area and some of the, the surrounding areas are linked to some of the difficulties that we see in individuals with dyscalculia. Um, so the main thing we see is an impaired number sense. And uh, we've seen from um, brain imaging studies, uh, studies looking at individuals who've had trauma to this area of the brain or individuals who, who've had this area temporarily disrupted, um, that they, they lose what's called a num number sense. And essentially what a number sense is, is this um, built-in intuitive sense for how large a group is that most of us seem to be born with and mo most of us uh, seem to be able to exhibit within the first week of birth. Um, this seems to be uh, missing in some individuals with developmental dyscalculia. Um, and this seems to be an internal mechanism that at least arithmetic skills get built upon. And then once those fall out of place, all the other layers of mathematics um, tend to not fall into place because of that missing initial piece. Um, some of the other areas of difficulty that we see with individuals of dyscalculia with dyscalculia include an inability to retrieve math-specific bits and pieces of information. Uh, and again, that is linked to an area that, that's close to the intraparietal sulcus. Um, and it's, it's uh, mainly the, the left angular gyrus that's uh, involved. Uh, and some have uh, difficulty with uh, spatial attention skills, uh, again, necessary for parts of mathematical um, thinking and, and processing. Uh, and that's involved with the bilateral, posterior, superior, parietal lobe. Um, not everybody who has a dyscalculia diagnosis or a mathematics disorder diagnosis necessarily has um, uh, um, uh, an, a genetic abnormality in this area. It is possible for somebody to get that diagnosis due to poor teaching skills or, or academic skills. Uh, however, I think that tends to be a minority of, of individuals who get diagnosed with it. And for most of the individuals out there, they either have one of these anatomical abnormalities or they have weaknesses in their working memory or reading skills or attention that affect mathematics as well as a range of other academic skills.